Hello, I'm Bo with Windsor Industries, and I'm here to introduce you to the Clipper Carpet Extractor. The Clipper has a 12 gallon solution tank, sprays the solution out with a 100 psi pump, utilizes an 18 inch brush to agitate the solution into the carpet, and recovers it with a 20 inch vacuum shoe into its 12 gallon recovery tank. Let's take a look at the components of the Clipper 12. We'll start by looking at the undercarriage. To access the undercarriage, simply remove the recovery tank. and tilt the machine back. On the undercarriage, you'll find the spray jets, which come out with a quarter turn, almost like twisting the top off a ketchup bottle. To access the jets, simply reach underneath, give the jet a quarter turn, and the jet comes straight out. The beauty of the quarter turn jets is that as compared to brass jets, when you put a brass jet back in, Sometimes the fan spray doesn't line up correctly because you over twist the jet. That causes streaking. Whenever you put a quarter turn jet back in, it automatically lines up so that there's no streaking. Additionally, you can access the brush by simply reaching your hand in behind the brush, pulling it from its housing so that you can clean it and maintain it. To put the brush back in, simply line up the keyed area on the drive, give it a firm push in, and then push up into the clip. The last component of the undercarriage is the vacuum shoe, which pivots so that it stays in constant contact with the floor. On the front of the Clipper 12, you'll notice ports for a solution line and a vacuum line if you want to use accessories. The brush adjustment is located on the side. This is the recovery tank for the Clipper 12. The recovery tank has a dump hose that's located in the back and it's completely removable so you can clean it out thoroughly. Let's take a look at the control panel for the Clipper 12, which is located right here in the back of the machine. The control panel consists of the following items. Circuit breakers for both the brush and the vacuum motor. And the control buttons for the spray, brush motor, and the vacuum motor. The spray button has two modes, intermittent spray and constant spray. To select intermittent spray, simply press the top of the button. And then the spray is operated by depressing any of the buttons on the underside of the control panel, located right here right here or right here. In constant mode, the pump is on all the time, independent of the buttons. Lastly, one of the things that makes the Clipper truly unique is the fact that it can operate like this in a pullback fashion or by simply grabbing the silver handle and flipping the handle over, it operates in a walk behind mode as well. Always think safety first. When preparing your machines for use, always wear the proper protective equipment, such as safety glasses and gloves. To prepare your clipper extractor for use, you'll need to check the jets, check the brush, pay close attention to the wear indicators, fill the solution tank with fresh water, and add your chemical, being certain to measure and dilute it properly. Another option for filling your clipper, if you're not near a janitor's closet, is the six foot long fill hose that will allow you to fill the solution tank from any faucet. When replacing the recovery lid, be sure that you can read all the writing on the recovery dome from behind the machine. That way, it'll be seated properly. Before plugging in your machine, Make sure that the cord is intact with no cuts and that your ground plug is intact as well and plugged into a grounded outlet. When plugging in your cord, make sure that you plug in and give the cord a twist 
to lock it in place so that it doesn't pull apart while you're cleaning. To keep the tension off of the connection while you're cleaning, crimp your cord like so and insert it into the cord holder located on the control panel handle. To adjust the brush, simply turn the brush motor on with the brush height adjuster in the storage position. Then lower notch by notch until you hear the pitch of the motor change and the brush comes in contact with the carpet. Then lower one more notch and your brush is adjusted correctly. To begin operating your Clipper 12, you'll need to adjust the handle so that it's in a comfortable position for you to operate. Turn on your vacuum motor, turn on your brush motor, and select between constant or intermittent spray. Right now, I'm gonna use intermittent spray and operate the pump with any of the buttons on the underside of the handle. When you can see the water beginning to come through the recovery dome, the machine is operating perfectly. When you reach the end of your pass, let go of the water, shut off the pump, and pull back another foot so that you recover everything that you put down. Make an overlap pass of your previous pass. To use your clipper in the walk behind mode, simply flip the handle over. Normally, when you operate a machine like this in the pullback mode, you want the handle low around your waist. In a walk behind mode, you want the handle up high so that you can push it along the carpet. Turn on your vacuum motor turn on your brush motor and turn your spray jet to constant and begin walking. When you reach the end, turn your pump off, push forward another six inches, lift the machine and make your turn. Turn your spray back on and make an overlap pass. When you're done cleaning, you'll need to empty and rinse your recovery tank. And empty your solution tank. The last step in preparing your clipper extractor for storage is to remove the lids from the recovery tank and the solution tank so that they can dry thoroughly and put the brush into storage position. Congratulations, you're now ready to use your Windsor Clipper Extractor.